As far as the sit down video, I wanted to do this with you guys so you could kind of get an overall sense of meeting her, what she is like. Zuri specifically. As we went and visited the facility um, of where um, we would be getting her from. So that's the clips that you saw earlier. So none of those clips were actually Zuri. We wanted to know that we were getting her from a person that cared about health concerns, all of those different factors. And there are different um, concepts out there for every person. Um, like I said, I've had rescue dogs. I see so much value in rescuing a dog and giving them a good home. And there are so many great rescue facilities, specifically for Dobermans, even in Georgia. Um, but for me and my household this time around, it worked best to have a dog from puppyhood. And they also offer puppies at those rescues as well. But like I said, for me and Carrie, that's what we chose to do. So we wanted to make sure we were getting her from a great facility and all of that, that they were treated well, that this person was ethical, of course, that they were registered. Um, and so that's what we decided to do. And so that's what you saw in those last clips, like kind of the process of us like doing the, the background research, if you will, to see if we were gonna get her from that particular location. Fortunately for us, we fell in love with it. And so we were like, okay, this is the place. If we hadn't, we would have just still been on the search to find the right fit for us. Um, so we go down there and really what happened with Zuri was that um, we wanted a puppy within a certain time frame. That's not typically how it works uh, because of course the, the mommy dogs have to get pregnant. Um, and so there was one litter that they had one puppy left over that was not spoken for, right? And so I reach out um, because they, they have a social media and all of them. They say, hey, we have one left that's not spoken for. Um, this would be people that aren't, if you're interested and you're not on our waiting list already, well, which we were on the waiting list, but if you're on our waiting list and you're interested, you know, the people prior had a particular color in mind um, and gender, gender in mind. And so that's how we, they got to that point. Like when you're on the wait list, you could say, I want a red female Doberman. Like you could say that. And so all the people in front of us wanted other things. Um, and she was black and rust and she was a female. Um, and so for me, I always had wanted a red Doberman, just like how Ginger was, cause that was just that nostalgia. We were even gonna name her Nala because that was a 90s quintessential movie for me, Lion King. And so I just thought that that was the cutest name ever. So we had the name picked out and we wanted a red. That Then she came about. So there was, um, you know, in her litter, two girls that were left and we had one and another owner had the other. And so it just worked out where I was like, you know what? She doesn't have to be red. This fits our timeline. I went down there, I met her when she was maybe about two weeks old, I think. Like, at, or no, not two weeks old, about four weeks old. Um, So I got to see her like as a small puppy, okay? And which we were fortunate to live in the same area within driving distance, about two hours from where the facility was. So. It really, really, really was a good experience because we got to go through all of that while being nearby. So in the weeks leading up to us actually bringing her home, we saw her about three or four times. Um, so we got to see her progress, her growth, just all of those different things, get her acclimated to our scent. And I think that really made a big difference for us um, in kind of bringing her home. I'm not gonna say like we didn't have some little crying at night and things like that, but I think she had already kind of gotten acclimated to us just a little bit. Um, and so it wasn't as much of a like, oh my God, I, you completely took me out of my environment. Where the heck am I? Um, and so I don't know, when we uh, got Zuri, like she um, was walking and she like put her paws and her head on my chest. And I was like, you know what? I think I think she's the one, you know? So it all worked out. Um, we were able to get a puppy on the timeline we had originally planned um, where we would have the most you know, block of time to be committed to being new dog owners. And so that really worked out. And so um, let's talk a little bit about her now. Um, so Zuri, she is, like I said, one years old. Um, we brought her home maybe, I don't know how old, maybe, maybe nine or no, maybe 10 weeks. And so we bring her home. We're excited to have her. And it's really just a great experience beginning. Like she was already very smart. Um, I think on the scale of like how smart dogs are, they're like the fifth smartest dog. Like when I, and when I tell you this, I'm not like joking. They, they are so intelligent, which is why they require a little bit more work sometimes. Um, they're so intelligent. I mean, she has puzzle toys. She has 
you know, things where she plays with them. If you check out her Instagram, you'll see under her toy category, like all of the different types of toys we use to play with her just because they need mental stimulation. They need physical exercise. Um, and so Zuri really was the puppy for us and it just kind of worked out and we were able to bring her home. Um, and maybe I'll drop some pictures um, over here of the day we brought her home. So you'll see those. And other than that, I just really loved having her in our life. Like it took a minute to get used to taking the dog out and all of that. I um, mean, it really didn't take a lot to get used to because I knew what to be ready for because um, I'd had a puppy in the past, but you know, she just had her own nuances. So um, we also, like I said, decided to, we had to come up with a name because once we realized we weren't gonna get a red Doberman, the name didn't fit anymore. And so we came about the name Zuri because I wanted a very strong African, um, even African-American, if you will, but African name. I knew that's what I wanted and she was gonna be a female. So I wanted like a very regal sounding name. Also, when it comes to dogs and just training them, some people care about this, some don't. I may not care in the future. Sometimes it's easier to have a two syllable name. So her name is Sir Three, two syllables. So it's easy to say her name as opposed to a long name like Cleopatra. That's that's a long name to say when you're trying to recall, you know, play with your dog and do, like that's a lot. And so we wanted like kind of like a two syllable name. Um, I can't even remember what other names we had on the list, but Zuri just ended up working out. Um, and so I really liked that name and it came off very strong. It means beautiful in Swahili, which I loved. And literally she has lived up to that name so much because we cannot take her anywhere without people literally stopping us in our tracks and telling us how beautiful she is. And it's not just coming from Adobe Mama. It, the people just love her. Um, one, I think it's because Dobermans aren't as um, common as they used to be. Um, and then, two, so people don't, they're not used to seeing them. And then two, like, you know, they are known for their shiny black coats, you know, short hair, um, shiny if you take good care of them, feed them quality food, you know, care about those things. So she has a shiny, beautiful coat. She kind of has a little print. She has a little swag about her. You know, Zuri has a little swag about her. So um, without further ado, maybe I should just introduce you to Zuri. Um, and then you'll get to see her for yourself. So let me go get her. Hold on. So Zuri is one years old. She, I know last time she went to the vet, she was about 75 pounds. Um, but now, oh gosh. But now she um, probably is about 80 pounds. Um, her mom was 90 pounds, which is really big for a girl. Um, we got to meet her mom when she was in her mom's tummy um, from visiting. Um, that clip you saw, we actually got to meet the mom. But at the time, we didn't know that we were going to get, you know, specifically her. Um, girl. And so, um, wow. Yeah. So, so we didn't know we were going to get her specifically. Um, but we did get to meet the mom. I'm like, wow, she's big. Like, and so she was big. Um, I'm saying even outside of her pregnancy, like she weighed 90 pounds, which is not, I won't say it's uncommon, but that's a little high on the, you know, not high, but just large on the, the girl female side. Usually they weigh somewhere, I think between 75 and 80, I think 80, 85. Um, and so for her mom to be 90 pounds, it's like, wait a minute. Um, so, um, that is how much her mom, you know, weighed. So I think Zuri will be relatively large. Like I said, typically a year, I think they said, they kind of start getting close to what their real weight will be. But our trainer actually said just with this particular facility, he's noticed that um, although the girls typically finish growing before the boys, that the girls right around a year, year and a half, like just have like this spurt where they fill out, where they get, you know, more muscular, more, um, Zuri. Oh my God, more muscular, more, um, you know, filled out. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, she just turned one. So we'll see what that, look at her. Yeah, I have to show y'all her right now. Y'all see her? <laughs> so they get more, no, stay up. So they get more, she's like, I'm over it. Sorry, she's probably tasting some food that I had on me earlier. Um, and now she's trying to take a nap. Stop. Okay, they get more um, filled out and all of that as they get uh, older, right? And so um, 
I mean, when we brought her home, she may have been about, I remember at some point her being about 18 pounds. I can't remember if that was maybe like a couple weeks after, but maybe she might've started at 12, something like that. But I mean, she was literally growing every month. Like they grow rapidly. So they kind of come home as a cute puppy, but they get big fast, okay? This is a year's worth of growth. Um, hopefully I'll be able to put like a picture or some clips of her when she was like smaller when we first brought her home, but she was small. And then she just grew over time. <laughs> um, so uh, we were able to, you know, really get adjusted to her size and kind of get, it was during the pandemic. So that was kind of one of the things that we talk about um, a lot. We've worked really hard to get her even more socialized and we're still doing that every day as we start to get outside more. Um, but it gives some of your family time to get adjusted to the fact, this is not a little Fifi, okay? Like this is not gonna be a little teacup dog. Um, and that's not what we wanted anyway. Um, and so, um, no, we don't do that. We don't use our tea. And so one of the, uh, she likes to play. That's her playing, but we don't play that around here. So um, really, really. <laughs> she is living it up because I let her sit on this couch, y'all. Um, okay, I'm making her uncomfortable. So um, that's what I will say about um, big old body um that's what i will say about them is they like to be near their owners um they're also known as like velcro dogs now i will say zuri likes to be with us um but she as a puppy was a little bit independent which was good um in the sense that she felt you know she didn't always have to be like literally up under us because we kind of required her not to be because we knew that that was something that these dogs are more prone to they're prone to separation anxiety because they literally like to be up under their owners like all the time right and so that's not something we wanted her to have but once again we were in a pandemic so we were both home a lot more than what you would normally be as a new dog owner um so we had to work with her on crate training and things like that like still putting her in the crate despite us being physically in the house so now i feel like we're at a good point where even when i'm in the house i will still put her in the crate like typically if i'm going to do a video um where it's sit down i'm going to put her in the crate just because I need her to know how to be um, in her crate, right? So um, one of the other things I like to, sorry, are you done? Crosses her paws like this, okay? Like that's just a normal occurrence for her. There we go. We don't lick on the mouth. So that's one of the other things I will say about Zuri is that she um, does love to be with us, but we try to make sure that we don't spoil her too much. Um, for example, like this, she never gets this treatment, which is why she's acting like this. Um, like as far as sitting on the couch while I'm trying to do stuff, no, that's a big no-no. Um, so <laughs> she is, um, like I said, uh, Zuri means beautiful in Swahili. Like she has just turned out to be the prettiest dog. I just love the way she looks. Um, we get a lot of compliments on her and I just think we really have tried to make it a good um, environment for her. We've incorporated her into our lifestyle, of course, as you should when you have a dog like this. Um, we, you know, take her on long walks. Um, we do all the things, you know, we play with her, we buy her toys, all of those different things. So um, she's literally like, oh, this is <laughs> um, And so that is kind of what we have done to um, incorporate her into our lives and so i'm so happy you guys love seeing content with zuri in it um it's she's a part of our daily life so i will do content related to zuri because like i said she is a big part of our lives so she has her own playlist now in our rocket with the robbins family um she has her own um different articles that we'll do on our blog um, about her as well, like toys that she's liking, things that we're buying her. Um, so I'll do that more as well too. Um, but ultimately like, oh look, she opened her eyes for y'all. Um, <laughs> she's going back to sleep again. So um, she's just a big part of our lives. I'm just excited that you guys got to meet Zuri. And I, like I said, she, as far as personality, she is very chill. I, feel, I will say, I feel like she has mellow. Well, I think I said the wrong words. She has mellowed out since she was a puppy, right? And they're a puppy, she's still a puppy technically, 
um, when they were puppies, she was on 20, okay? But she started like around eight months or so, started to chill out just a little. Like, you know, before if I had put her next to me, she would have been moving, 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 hopping over me, moving. Now, look at her. Literally just laying her face on my hands. Um, and so I will say that she's mellowed out some, which is good, and she will continue to mellow out more as she gets a little older. Um, they are known, like I said, for being Velcro dogs. I would say her Velcro status on a scale of one to 10 is about a seven. Um, she doesn't love being by herself, but she can be. Um, she'll sit on her own mat. She'll, like, she doesn't have to always be underfoot, um, but she just prefers it. Does that make sense? Um, and then also on cuteness level, 10. I mean, 10 out of 10. Look at this face. Look at this face. Look at this face. Um, and also, now I will say this about Zuri. Zuri, as we have learned through her training, she can be a drama queen, okay? By drama queen, I mean she is very vocal. So when we were first starting to get with her trainer, like more hardcore training, um, things like the sit and the down, she would bark on her way down. She would sigh, she still sighs. Like if she's like, I don't wanna do this, you will know, she will tell you. Um, and so it's like, you know, getting over those hurdles of like her not wanting to do things has been pretty funny sometimes. Um, but we just have learned to work through it. Like, you know, I'm your mama, you gonna do what I say kind of deal. Um, and so those are the funny moments that we have with her because she definitely has a personality. Like there is no doubt about it, this dog has a personality, okay? Um, but another thing that's been great is she, uh, we did have a family gathering recently, which is the most people she's been around. And she's very, very loving. Like she loves people. Um, she doesn't like a whole bunch of excitement, I will say. So you can't be around Zuri like fighting. No, she don't like that, okay? You can't even be play fighting. She don't like that, which is fine with us. Um, but so she, but otherwise she's usually pretty calm when it comes to, what is happening? She's usually pretty calm when it comes to meeting new people as long as you introduce them, you know, slowly and adequately. Like you can't just put your dog in every type of scenario. Like I tell people that all the time. And one of the things that my trainer has said that has always stuck with me is Zuri ain't an everybody dog. But when she's for you, she's for you. And so, and, and really by an everybody dog, I don't mean people, I mean other dogs. So like Zuri, she likes other dogs. Um, she can be around other dogs, but there are certain dogs that just get on her nerves. So for example, when she was at training camp, there was one other, there was different kinds of dogs. So there was a German Shepherd. I think um, the trainer also has like some Rottweilers, some Mountain Laws, I hope I said, I'm saying that right. Uh, Dutch Shepherd, like just different types of dogs. Lots of them are big. She, he also has Frenchies. He also has small dogs out there because he wants them to learn how to be around different sizes of dogs without being reactive. So she had one dog that was down there. Her name was Jasmine that she loved. Um, I think Jasmine was a little bit older than her, um, but she also liked like seeing her and kind of getting the ropes of, you know, what am I supposed to be doing in this new environment with other dogs? Um, Cause she had not really been around other dogs for an extended amount of time. Um, other than when she was a puppy, right? So this is her first time being, you know, we do take her to the groomer and the vet so she can, and honestly, sometimes we take her just for the purpose of acclimating her. She does, you know, she does have all of her shots and we take her for wellness visits, things like that, if there's something we're concerned about. Um, but we took her just to, to the groomer and things like that, not because we can't give her a bath. She's, I mean, she doesn't have a, she doesn't need a complicated haircut, um, but just so she could be acclimated to, um, you know, getting groomed if we need her to get groomed, but also uh, being around other dogs. And I'm not saying it's the most relaxing experience for her, but I think we'll continue to expose her to it so she can then be a productive dog in society, if you will. Um, so yeah, this is Zuri. Um, she is our loving, beautiful, um, likes to be around other dogs, but not everybody's dog. Likes kids, likes humans that are nice to her. Um, she, yeah, I don't know how else to describe her, but she has brought so much joy to our lives. Like I said, she is a part of our everyday life. Um, the training part of this experience, we will do a different video about that, but I just wanted you guys to meet her and know that she's a big part of our lives. Right, Zuzu? Right, Zuzu? I used to call her Zuri Foot because when she was getting um, bigger, she, 
she would literally, you could hear her feet like upstairs, like she was playing with Carrie, like, doo -doo -doo. like you could hear her, them rumbling around, right? And so I always just call her Zuri Foot too. But I think I've got, gotten out of that nickname because now she's kind of gotten in her stride, if you will. Um, so sometimes we call her Zuzu because I think she's like, not crazy, but just like, like I said, her sassiness sometimes. Um, I'd be like, look, Zuzu, you ain't gonna tell me what to do. Once again, two syllables, see? Um, but yeah, she is a good, like, why are you so chill right now? I'm trying to do the video. <laughs> so, like I said, um, this is Zuri. We love her. Um, she has been the best dog we could have ever imagined. There we go. The best dog we could have ever imagined. Um, we can't wait to, like I said, she's only one. So there's just so much more left. Um, that we'll be going through this experience. Like I said, I, I hope to share more with you soon on whatever you guys are looking for. Like, do you know, you wanna know what she wants to eat? Um, we do have a day in the life planned for her. Um, so you can see like what Zuri's day is like. Um, so we'll do a day in the life with her and things like that too. So you can just see what that's like. But yeah, this is Zuzu. Zuzu. You wanna say bye to the people? You wanna say bye? You wanna say bye? There we go. Had your airplane ears on. That's what I call them when her ears are down. And usually that means affectionate. Like when she's got her ears down, that means like, oh, I love you. When her ears are up, that means she's alert. And not necessarily like, oh, I'm gonna get you, but just like alert. Like I'm listening, I'm paying attention. Um, and then my sister has this thing called ears of defiance. That's another airplane mode status. But like if I'm giving her a command and her ears are like going the opposite way, that means she's trying to ignore me. That means she's like trying not to listen to me, uh, which is, that's what Jada calls ears of defiance. So Jada's a really good dog auntie. Um, and if you are not already following Zuri, please go follow her. She has a goal of hitting 1,000 um, followers on her Instagram. And so that is our current goal. We wanted to hit it by her birthday, but it's still her birthday month. So you have time to be part of growing Zuri's page. So I'm gonna put her Instagram handle below. And even when you go to her page, she has so many puppy friends, so many dog friends, so many other Doberman owners. Um, that are following her and that are part of our community on there um, that I want you guys to get connected to if you're interested in having a Doberman of your own one day. Um, and so, like I said, you can learn a lot. I've learned a lot from the people in our community that we follow each other. So please, please, please go check out her Instagram for more information on like her daily life, what we're doing with her, what we're working on, what we're training on. All those things will be there. <laughs> um, so anywho, um, other than that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, stay tuned for more videos where we share more about Zuri's life, where we got her, how we got her training, all of the good stuff. Um, but stay tuned. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then hit the notification button. Thanks for watching.